Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. We want to thank our two newest patrons. Indeed. We want to say a huge thank you to John and Jamie for keeping us going. Absolutely. We couldn't do it without you guys. There's This is going to be a real fun one. In fact, this is one of the most fun ones, I think. It, this one is definitely fun. Yes. Fun and yet, wow, uh, the times we are in and, you know, <laughs> what can you say about this? This is that X marks the spot. This, I do think, is absolutely monumental. I, I think this is the game changer. I think we are in the game changing times as we're making this. It's March 21st, 2024. Mm, in, 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 on my radar, in my mind, the April 2024 is just absolutely monumental. It's been that way um, at least for the last seven or eight years uh, as I became aware of you know these eclipses and going deeper into the eclipses. Uh, I've always known my entire life we'd be going through these times, and I've always known my entire life we're going to be faced with the challenges that we're going to be faced with unless we could shift enough people's consciousness to have an awakening that would really disturb the entirety of this dark paradigm that we find ourselves in. You know, and I, I kind of see it as this is a change that needs to happen. It's something that's pretty much destined. It's about how are we going to react to those things that are happening to us? Because really, ultimately, all we can control is what is within Ourself, and that's the most important thing. It's our reaction to things. Now, this is Noah Berggren. He's a meteorologist on Fox 35 Orlando. He says, This is actually bizarre. Now, I've heard these type of words coming from meteorologists really only in the last year, uh, where they're noticing strange stuff. And he's, he says, and I'm not just saying that. This will be one of the more notable severe storm nights in March in recent memory. In the past hour, over 16,000 individual lightning bolts from western New York to northeast Texas, spanning over 1,200 plus miles. What are all these lightning bolts doing? You know, is it a sign from God or the gods? Yeah, is it a sign of the control system? Is it Mother Nature? It's it's actually a very similar path to the eclipse path. In fact, Biff Don here says, yeah, eclipse path is identical. And I found dozens of people noting this and saying this is a sign, this is big, and people just just knowing it and and then you get people that say things like i'm in ohio and that was not normal lightning either it was interesting i heard people in ohio say they saw gold lightning or gold flashes in the clouds and you know it's just a lot of comments where people are saying something's weird too it acted inorganic like cheesy sci-fi listen to these comments comments because they are very very important and of course that lightning's going over the new madrid which is part of that x and x marks the spot the 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 center point of those two eclipses the new madrid is famous uh for its big big eruption in 1811 and 1812 the new madrid earthquake should be an s on there quakes the greatest earthquake recorded in North America, centered in this area, December 16, 1811, to February 7, 1812. 1,874 quakes fell at Louisville, 250 miles away. Tremors also fell in Boston, Detroit, New Orleans, Real, for, Real Foot Lake, covering some 25,000 acres formed when some streams changed their courses. New Madrid, Missouri destroyed. Very few people lived in this entire area at that point in time. As far as settlers, there were um, more indigenous people in the area than there were settlers at that point in time. The Mississippi went backwards. It, it, it changed its, its flow and actually reversed direction. People in the river uh, caught uh, totally by surprise. Boats capsized. Houses went down. It was just a mess. 
There literally was a raft of trees blocking the Missouri. Uh, and you see these depictions of what people saw running and, and, and screaming for their lives because it was so traumatic, it was so powerful. The ground here is, is under the, well, it's on the craton. So this is one of the most solid pieces uh, of real estate that we have in the U.S. And, and that's what enables the seismic shocks to travel. So you see all these depictions, people's houses coming down, trees coming down, trees blasted away, um, literal liquefaction going on. You had eruptions uh, of water being shot up and sand being shot up into the air coming up from the ground. It was just incredible. And this, this went on for a period of months. And in fact, Three very large quakes estimated to have been somewhere between seven and eight on the Richter scale uh, occurred in that time period. The three largest uh, 1811, 1812 earthquakes destroyed a lot of settlements along the Mississippi River. Again, they felt it as far away as Hartford, Connecticut, Charleston, South Carolina, New Orleans, all over the place. This was huge huge it changed permanently changed the landscape and and these do happen at fairly regular intervals uh, of no longer than about 500 years uh, every 500 years you'll have this now it's only been 200 uh, plus years but yet is it going to happen again uh, you know this is something that Cindy had a vision another one of our family members just shared their vision too and and they saw uh the new madrid going off cindy got uh, the new madrid going off from the guides i did not see the new madrid go uh, going off in in any sort of vision from the guides but i did see cascadia and then i saw the san andreas going off as i've shared with you guys and uh those those go back to it i I think it was 2019 I think it was 2019 that I uh, saw them and they were within a few months span of each other very very much like watching the TV type of vision and then Cindy saw the whole country kind of come to a shutdown with her vision and I just wanted to touch on some of the similarities between what's going on now and what's gone on in the past because these things roll through and there are signs to look for that we should notice, like the Devil Comet, right? The Devil Comet, the comet from Draco returns for the first time in 71 years, they say. Now, I don't know if I believe that this is really the same comet. I don't trust, you know, anything that comes from NASA or any of the official sources. For one, I don't think it's a comet. Yeah, I really think this is a ship. Um, so 12P Pons Brooks is it will be here during the eclipse and uh, the closest approach is uh, a few weeks after the eclipse but it's going to run when the comet shall run that that's the nostradamus words you know thirst famine war pestilence when the comet shall run and then he also talked about great disasters are made in april and great leaders will be ridiculed because they brought such disaster upon the planet and then a horrible famine that develops through a pestilent wave it goes on and on um, uh, islamic invasion that occurs uh, in the same time frame and the great earthquake with the stadium full that occurs 20 degrees into Taurus, which will equate to uh, sometime in March. Like usually that's going to be like in your in your um, March 10th, 11th, 12th uh, area. And it was interesting because when we were talking about the great stadium full of people, um, Cindy, Cindy was thinking in terms of the capital, and I had that had never crossed my mind. But then it makes perfect sense. Oh my God, it makes perfect sense. The more I think about this, the more the realizations hit me. Yeah, I mean, here we're thinking the great stadium. And I'm thinking Colosseum in Rome. You're thinking, well, could it be 
you know, something like a baseball stadium, a soccer stadium, something like that. Uh, you know, maybe even a stadium with a big, huge concert. But no, you know, you think about the Greco-Roman architecture that we have, which ultimately is coming from Sumeria. It's coming from the Anunnaki and that culture. You know, that's that's what Washington's all laid out with. Washington is grid work with um, so much occult symbolism that's that's all pointing towards you know the control system. And think about it, you know, it, it simply could be, you know, something going on in, in Congress and, and the White House and, and that being wiped out because there was a war in 1812 and, and the White House was burnt down. Mm-hmm. And as you're going to see here, and I'm sorry I'm hogging this because I'm going to let Cindy go. You, you know what else we had in, in the same time period as the great <laughs> New Madrid quakes? We had a comet. We had a comet then, we have a comet now. Oh, ho, ho. yes, and it was Tecumseh's comet, or so-called. And you had the New Madrid earthquake happen with this comet. And you also had the U.S. invaded, last time it was invaded, 1812, by the, uh, by the British. Yeah, and you had the War of 1812. Whoa, isn't that interesting? Because in, you also, as I said, you had the White House burn in that time. Who was Tecumseh anyway? Well, he was one of the greatest Native American leaders in American history. He had a vision to unify the tribes to create an independent country that could rival the Americans in the expansion of the Europeans. He was allied with the British during the War of 1812. You know, the enemy of my enemy is my friend type thing. He was killed in action at the Battle, Battle of Thames, thus ending the Confederacy interesting is it not isn't it he had the curse of tippecanoe yes it's tippecanoe the name tippecanoe the curse of tippecanoe derives from the 1811 battle as a governor of the indian territory william harrison bribed native americans to cede their lands to the u.s government he handed out whiskey that caused alcoholism to run rampant among the indians well, we've seen the British government uh, in the Opium Wars go ahead and uh, send opium over to do the same thing to the royal line in China and also just the average people. And of course, we've seen fentanyl come into the U.S. and, and that from China now. So, you know, again, this is a a karmic ploy that the system use, what, uses all the time. What goes around comes around. This angered the Shawnee chief, Tecumseh, and brought the government soldiers and Native Americans to the brink of war. As a result, Tecumseh and his brother organized a group of Indian tribes designed to resist white westward expansion. In 1811, Harrison successfully attacked Tecumseh's village, in which Harrison defeated the Shawnee leaders, Tecumseh. And he then gave this curse. But Harrison will die, I tell you, and when he dies, you will remember my brother, Tecumseh's death. Uh, Now, this is the brother of Tecumseh speaking of this uh, curse. You think that I have lost my powers, I who caused the sun to darken, because there was an eclipse. Mm. Uh Uh-oh. Wait a minute. Eclipse, comet, war, invasion of the U.S., White House burning. Huh. One people putting down another people. This is the exact same thing we got. This is happening again. And the red men to give up the fire water. But I tell you, Harrison will die. And after him, every chief with a zero at thereafter will die. Every, every president that was elected on a zero year will die. And when each one dies, I let everyone remember the death of our people. Now, that did hold true uh, as, as, you know, there was assassinations and dying in office all the way up to George W. Bush in 2000. And it says there was at least two more serious assassination attempts, but that, that was the end of the curse at 2000, apparently. But it did hold true all those years. Isn't that fascinating? So when you see here, you know, this was just insane, the damage preceded by a comet 
we had an eclipse, we had an invasion of the U.S., and we had the White House all burned down, and it was the supplanting also of one people by another people. It's just the system doing what it does yet again. I don't think you could lay a better path to help people see the pattern than this. This is a pattern. This has been going on for a very long time. And at this time, people didn't know about technologies. They just thought that God was angry, you know. <laughs> but there are technologies involved. There's also a lot of uh, human, humans can be very powerful in, in their in the way that they express themselves. I don't know if people realize if you work on your energy field and your energy body, how much you are able to really change in your life. Um, our destiny is, I think things are pre predestined. When we are born, we have a goal in mind. But how we get to that goal is completely up to us. But within that, is a whole nother pattern and we can see this going on and on and on and i feel it's really close to happening again um i mean we'll we're still waiting to see but with this planetary alignment the comet with with what we see here i mean i see it happening all over again how bumpy of a road is it going to be i don't know do these things need to happen for us to grow and expand Yes, they do. And they're, then they're not fun. So that's not a popular thing to say. But pain is our greatest teacher. And when things get difficult, people find a way through them and they expand when you expand your energy body. So really, if people could expand their energy bodies and throw light out there with the idea that things are going to change for the better this is what we're going to get because we are a collective conscious we're a collective conscious and even though an outside force is tinkering here that doesn't mean we have to be completely submitted to it no we have power and it's shown here in this too with that native american he said what he said and i believe he has a lot of power inside of him too so here, this is uh, Project Avalon. Uh, this is a nice little recap. The Great New Madrid earthquakes were preceded by the arrival of a comet that had not been seen since the ancient Egyptians. Now, they're telling us that Pons Brooks comes around every 71 years. Y you know, again, I don't believe anything from NASA. Nothing. To come to this comet, as some called it, also known as Napoleon's Comet because there was a lot of big happenings over in Europe at the same time and and war going on over there. Um, you, you know, you, you can't make this stuff up. This is all part of the real, and I want to say a, a, a term, but I want to make sure we're able to get these videos out there and it won't get too censored. Because, you know, the, this, these are critical, and I do think this is as important a video as any that we've made, really, to understand how they operate. Think about the, um, the Wizard of Oz. In the end, you pull away the curtain, it was all technology. It was smoke and mirrors. This is what this is. This is all technology. This is smoke and mirrors. I understand and totally understand about uh, the fact that we're in a magnetic pole reversal. I understand the works of Douglas Voigt over, you know, again at the, um, I'm drawing a blank on him, but Ben Davidson, you know, his, his whole scenario, I understand the Thunderbirds project and, you know, it is an electric universe. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, all these things, we get it. We, we do get it. But what I've come to understand is that they utilize natural cycles to their benefit. And they, they have an out there. When they utilize natural cycles, um, they could just simply get people to believe this is either an act of God, it's a 12,000 year cycle, it's this, it's that, you know, it's just because, you know, the, again, the magnetic shielding of the earth is dropping, so we're going to have all these cataclysms, and by the way, they put out the movies like 2012, and uh, the, um, the one with Nicolas Cage, where the sun flashed and burned, ha you know, the earth to a crisp, that's all Hollywood predicted programming. They're, they're getting us to not think that it's actually the ETs that are doing this, but in, in, in reality, it is the ETs that are doing this. 
there are natural cycles underway, they wouldn't be this devastating and damaging. And it provides a cover for them. It provides another another shield for them because you're going to get people that are awakening to the fact that there's massive die-offs on the, on the planet. There's these extinction-level events that happen at regular intervals, and then we automatically assume, well, it's got to just be a natural cycle. Boy, you know, Earth ain't so perfect after all, huh? Because we got to go through these things. But no, the natural cycles are because these are the time periods where the controllers decide it's time to roll everything back. Roll the population back, uh, roll the technology back, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So they utilize this. The, these are technologies. You know, the, the curtain is starting to be pulled. When I was on board more with this being a natural cycle and, and openly kind of putting things out there, like, what do you think, instead of saying what, what I really felt and leaving things up for more question marks, then, yeah, the views were, were very, very high. Uh, in fact, we've had million view, uh, 980 thousand uh, view video and also had uh, quite a few that hit into the hundreds of thousands it was really when uh, we exposed what the system is doing that the system recoiled and cut us off and shut us down and they kept us at 66,666 viewers as a max as their little haha but they've done that before too because they've 86 the video before and left it at 86 views when we were talking about the Federal Reserve not being what you think it is. Um, but our purpose is not to make money. You know, it really isn't. You know, we're, we're, our purpose is just to deliver this message until our mission is done, and then we will disappear into the sunset. Uh, and now is the peak time. This is peak time because it's all going down right now. So, you know, you had war and everything going on in Europe at the same time, and the, the comet has a tail that's estimated estimated to measure a million miles from head to tail, very visible in the night sky. Tecumseh's comet was named after the Shawnee leader who was rallying support among native tribes to curb the takeover of the land by the white man, by the system. Because the system will use the white man and then the system will discard the white man. The system you know, will use any being, any nationality, any tribe that it can, and then it'll toss it away later on because the system's not not really human. It's not Homo sapiens in the first place. Now, the comet was visible for 11 months during the New Madrid earthquakes. During. During. The comet was accompanied by a solar eclipse that year before the earthquakes and left many wondering if something was to happen. Is something big coming? Is this a side effect of the celestial object? Yes, this is a ship with a lot of technology. There's technologies in place around the planet. Think in terms of the White Knight satellite, the Black Knight satellite. Th you know, there's technology on the ship itself uh, that can be used to trigger things. And then there's other technologies in place. And as I'm saying this, I'm remembering some channeling that Cindy did. There's technologies inside the Earth itself. And in fact... Uh, they've hijacked the technologies that were placed inside the Earth by the Galactic Federation to keep the Earth together as it was a remnant of Tiamat. And the Dark System has been in control of this, this planet for thousands of years now. And instead of using it in, say, a, na a positive fashion, they could use that technology in a negative fashion to fracture the planet. And to cause the great quakes. And this is exactly what they intend on doing. We have the power and we have the ability to move up past and beyond these controllers. It's definitely something that's very frustrating because people feel like they have absolutely no control. And we're here to tell you that you absolutely have a lot of control. And we're moving out of a dark age. We're moving out of a time where the controllers are allowed to call all the shots. Well, we have to believe in ourselves. We have to believe that our energy and our thoughts and our collective consciousness matter and they make a difference. Belief, you have to believe. And that's exactly why they hold our belief system hostage. And as coming out of the womb, they start to teach us what we need to think. They don't teach us how to think. They teach us what to think. 
And that's just something that's uh, <clears throat> been ongoing and that people, they think that's normal and that's natural. And it's just not. It's just not. We are far more powerful than, than what we have been led to believe. So coming around that corner, when they're starting to lose their grip, their grip is slipping, they're nervous, it really feels like they've set the land up for something devastating to put people back a notch. But the irony is it's actually anything that they do to us is just going to strengthen us and make us better moving forward. So the guys wanted me to tie this into that. You know, the French invasion of Russia <laughs> and the Russian-French wars with Napoleon all happened in this time period too, 1812, the same time period. <clears throat> Napoleon had amassed the largest army that the that Europe had ever seen in our modern times, I should say, again, because, you know, again, this history replays. And then we have Macron, right? Look at this. I mean, so many people have done parodies of Macron, and I don't know if Macron actually did that himself or not. Dressed up like Napoleon. Let's see this one right here. Napo Napoleon pointing towards Macron. Macron, Napoleon. This one, you know, right here where he's right in front of a picture of Napoleon. When, well, when you look at Napoleon too, you know, again, he was a, a dictator. And in fact, this is, again, he's holding the eagle. He's holding the staff. He's, he's wearing uh, the Roman emperor's uh you know, uh, crown again, it, it, it is an extension of Rome. It is an extension of Sumeria. It is an extension of the Anunnaki. That's the big reveal. So here we got it all over again. You know, this was a massive war between France and Russia in 1812. Huge um, casualties, hundreds of thousands dead. You know, ultimately the whole Waterloo situation. And you could see how it's all tied in again. I, I bet you they're about, well, I know Napoleon was a very short guy. I think Macron's short too. But, you know, that that syndrome that both of these people have, it, it, and it's obvious because he's, he's a Rothschild banker. That's how he got into position. He's a figurehead. He's an actor. But at the same time, you know, actors have their dreams too, right? Mm -hmm. They sure do. They sure do. So... You know, a lot of this stuff is just the, the things that have been ongoing and how they explain them, you know, through the educational pamphlets that we get. These are all under under the controllers. It, it's there. They've been in the driver's seat for a very long time, but they've been booted out. And I've been getting for a couple of weeks now that after this comment, after this um, planetary alignment, we're going to go through a purge. We're going to go through some kind of a purge. And if you look now, there's a lot of people kind of dropping people in, in certain uh, positions of power that are no longer there. So I feel like it's already happening. And just like with any planetary energy, things don't generally just all happen in one day. It's like a wave coming in. So the wave of energy is coming in. It's going to peak and it's going to go back out. But that's going to last for quite a while. So what you had was a series of quakes. And so I do think we are really heading into um, challenging, challenging times. And, you know, just be as prepared as you can and know where you are. Know where you are and, you know, think of redundancy. Three main shocks, somewhere between seven and eight. And as you can see, many other smaller shocks. We, we are in uh, another tribulation period for certainly the United States and I do think obviously the whole world but especially the United States NATO and and the allies of the US um, another thing to just be aware of is it, when the new Madrid goes it's gonna push a lot of things it's gonna push a lot of things and I don't think that the New Madrid is necessarily the starting point. Um, I still feel that it probably will start with Cascadia. But Cindy saw it happening, bing, bang, boom, like so fast, one, two, three. And I'll let her address that. Um, I Again, I don't think we are, are well served in these times to be in areas that are very, very 
disaster prone. So if you are, you know, it, you know, right there in the New Madrid, if you are there in LA, if you're there, uh, Seattle, Portland, um, and if you are along the coastlines, because I had such clear visions, and it's not just me, a lot of other people have too had visions uh, along the coastlines. The guide said when I asked, where is the safest place in the U.S.? And they just said towards the middle, towards the middle. And it's just for this time period um, that we're looking at. I, th I think we have to look at things in stages. Um, and so we didn't want to be in New Mexico for the lockdown on the plague upon the land the way um, the, mayor, uh, the governor there was. Otherwise, New Mexico was going to be our, our home spot. Um, I just felt that it was too uh, Gestapo-ish there uh, to stay there. We both felt so oppressed there. Even though, he, would I breathe easier in New Mexico right now? Um, as long as I wasn't directly on the border area, probably a little bit, I probably would feel a little bit more uh, better, uh, you know, say, and again, not right near uh, Albuquerque or even, uh, you know, even though it's not huge, Santa Fe is still too big for these times, in my opinion. I think you want to be much more out at, at, than, you know, as, as possible, away from the population centers, away from targets, away from military targets, so... If we're talking uh, New Mexico, you don't want to be right next to Los Alamos. But going back to this, um, this will trigger other uh, quakes. And you can see some long, uh, quiet areas. You will see quakes happening along the Appalachians. Um, you know, the Blue Ridge area, gorgeous. Love the area. It's, it's wonderful. Just be aware that can trigger quake activity over here too. And South Carolina and you know Charleston is still probably my favorite uh, city in, in the entirety of this country. Um, but there is a fault line down there and there was a great quake there. I want to say the Charleston quake was 1880. Um, I'll look it up real quick. Liquify liquefaction of the soil um it was devastating so i think all these things are going to go from coast to coast in um probably a, some sort of rapid succession mm -hmm. and these are this is information that we've got and and some very very gifted family members have come and they're getting these visions too so once we see this energy a lot of people coming in and getting very similar information that's you know that's something that i watch i i definitely watch that a lot of people have had other dreams too when you know when it comes to big tsunamis i i've had my own and i think that's something that uh is to come or it's something that has happened i mean planetary alignments are so important that magnetic force field that's just going off and and this comet is huge yes it definitely has an effect on our minds and bodies some, some more than others so yeah it was 1886 charleston's uh, great quake it was probably around 7.3 they say uh and it was felt up in boston chicago milwaukee new orleans cuba and bermuda even in bermuda some people thought uh, the entirety of the florida peninsula had brought broken away from north america people were so distraught by this you know this to me i've always seen the quake happening the series of quakes happening and the invasion of the u.s by the chinese russians and other BRICS nations the invasion by the big military forces come after so I do think the quakes come first. Now, I feel that the sleeper cells and, you know, the migrants, they could get going before the quake. Um, so they could get going at any time. And it does feel um, more likely that we'll see maybe some bigger incidents even, even before we step into April, perhaps even, you know, down uh, at the very end of this month or right before the... Um, a manifestation of the energies of this coming solar eclipse on the 8th. This is another person again talking about this saying, you know, hey, I don't want to try to manifest anything, but don't you guys think this is kind of weird? Doesn't something hit you as like there's something odd here? You know, uh, something doesn't feel right in Kansas, Toto. Mm -mm. No, no, definitely not. And uh, this is 
I think really important to me. This really sews everything together. I mean, does it say definitively that something is going to happen? No, no, it does not say definitively. But they they understand these technologies. They've used these technologies cycle and cycle again. They have a pretty good idea if they prep the ground and they prep the the whatever it is they have in the earth and doing what they're doing with these technologies. They have a good idea that as the planetary alignments happen and the comet comes by, they have a pretty good idea of what's going to happen. So I think that they are actually hopeful. Do I think that we can lessen things? Do I think that we can even stop things? Absolutely, I do. I think that we can make this uh, event for our good. I think we can turn it into something for our good because I do believe strongly that we are all getting some severe, awesome upgrades through this eclipse and through these energies. Now, I've heard of other people in 2017 that their bodies like literally shook when when the eclipse happened. It shook. So if our bodies are going to shake when these eclipse happens, like mine did and other people I've heard of, what do you think that the earth is going to do? I mean, as above, so below. We are made from the material of earth. So this is this is a big thing and this is an added comment. So hundreds of schools are closed down. It just makes me wonder, you know, do the other uh, controllers, do they know more? And if we are able to manifest something where nothing really bad happens and all we get is upgrades, that's great for us. That's just us moving forward. And again, it, it, it all depends about the terrain. Like when you talk about the uh, 7.8, 1906 San Francisco, you can see how small the area that was affected was compared to what we have over in the New Madrid. And it's almost the same size, right? Well, it, it's again, it's right on the Creighton. So it's going to ring like a bell. It's going to transfer that energy to a, a much larger area. And I think we're going to see a series of them. I, I've, I've, I've been saying this again since 2017 when I started the channel. I think you're going to go bing, bang, boom, and then over here in, in Charleston. When we, look at the, when we look at the eclipse, and, and Rama, I think, is agreeing with yes. me, you know, the first, the first eclipse came into Oregon and it exited Charleston, right? And then, you know, this one's coming up this way. And I think it's going to affect um, the St. Lawrence River Way, which, again, there's there's fault lines up here. Every now and then you'll see some quakes along, uh, along this, even down in Ohio. Um, and we've seen really unusual quake activity. So it's going to remake the country. And that's what the whole point of all this is. And, and that's the whole point of the Pluto return. Uh, and, again, we're coming to the area we already did where uh, February 22nd, 2022, the Pluto, the planet Pluto, or if you just want to call it the heavenly body, whatever asteroid, big asteroid, you know, it, Pluto's designation has changed over the years. It returned to its same spot that it was at the signing of Declaration of Independence on 2-22-2022. And then Putin goes into the Ukraine right after. Pluto returns mean that empires crumble, they're rebuilt, there's changes in the, in the global structure. It, it's huge. It's, it's an enormous marker. We have all these different markers going on. This was a 6.8, 1895. You could see the area that this affected. Here's a 6.7 over in California in the area. So, the entirety of the country is going to be hit. The chances are um, <laughs> more than likely uh, we'll all feel it. Just about all of us will we'll know that something happened with that shaking. Now, of course, earthquake hazards are the highest over on the West Coast. But then look at that and look at Charleston and Alaska as well. I would not be surprised again if... Um, the Cascadia was preceded by big activity in either Japan uh, or Kamchatka Peninsula over in Siberia or Alaska, or, you know, it could just roll through really quickly. Um, if I had to take a stab in the dark at, at when I think the big quake's going to happen, 
I, in, in my mind, I've been leaning more towards uh, the second week of May um, because I also, th we got from the guides 1.5 years. I think that was on December around 7th through 10th of 2022, 1.5 years, and Cindy saw volcanic activity going off in the Pacific Northwest, or what we took for volcanic activity, and troops fighting on our soil. Uh, so, yeah, if, if the quake happens, I think the quake is, is the signal, and they will send in, yeah, shoot, they might even say, you know, oh, the UN has to send in troops to help the U.S. out in its time of need but in reality it's a takeover it's it's the exchanging of the guards it's going to be the splitting up of the country into different zones and uh, the u.s as we know it will be no more and and this is again uh just part of a bigger cycle look at this right natural phenomenon yeah how come you see ufos going into volcanoes all the time and coming on out and then Cindy picks up that what they do is this is how they recharge their energy systems. They, and this is a big, big, big way they recharge their energy systems. That plasma is important. And, and in the little town that I lived in, in Nevada, <clears throat> we had a uh, very large cloud go over one of our mountains. And there was uh, lightning for hours, but not one ounce of thunder. Not one little bitty squeak of thunder. Yet the lightning went on and on and on. It was completely silent. So these things are alien in nature. You know, they, I, I think a lot of times aliens just kind of laugh at us because so many in the mainstream think it's just us, yet all these other things are happening. I don't know. You know, it's, I, I think a lot of eyes are going to be opened. And I do hope a lot more people are going to be more prepared and less reliant on the government because they're not here to help. Definitely not. You know, there, there's times when earthquakes are attributed to God or the Lord, and this is King Kings 19, and when you look at the King James Version, and, and I, I see more Christians say King James Version is the only version they trust, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Um, yeah, it's not accurate, and, and nothing is accurate in this world. The, the reality is everything has been revised, it's always being revised, it's all... Believing in the science, you know, like, oh, you know, 100% effective. Well, maybe 70% effective. It wasn't that effective. Yeah, it's the same system that's given you this. And so, you know, interesting here, Jezebel sent a messenger, a messenger to Elijah saying, so let the gods do to me and more also, if I make not the life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. When you look at everywhere you see, what do you see? Lord, 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 Lord. Uh, okay, Mount Horeb, the Mount of God, right? Mount of God, Lord, God, Lord, Lord, Lord. Now we go over to the names of God, which is usually using the actual terms that are there in Hebrew. Ah, the angel of Yahweh. Okay, Yahweh's an individual. Came back and woke him up again. It's the messenger of Yahweh. The messenger of Yahweh. Yahweh sent a messenger. This is what this is telling us. The messenger came and woke him up. Said, get up and eat. Because you got to go visit Yahweh. You know, you, the journey would be too much for you if you don't eat. So get up and eat. And he got up and eat. And he drank, etc. Strengthened by the food. He traveled for 40 days and nights until he came to Horeb. The mountain of the Elohim. That's a different word there. Yeah, that's the mountain of the gods, the mountain of the judges of humanity. If you look over again to Greek mythology, why do the gods seem to get pleasure out of the struggles of humans? They seem to take pleasure in humanity struggling. Humanity is nothing but the plaything of the gods. There's a council of the gods. It's, it's there in Greek mythology, and it dates back to 800 B.C., way before anything Hebrew and, and, and literal dating other than tiny little, you know, one word lines uh, that they've found. And, and most of those are dating back to like around two or 300 BC. And you're literally getting one word, <laughs> one word. You have complete stories in, in Greek that are verifiable and they've been, uh, you know, verified by, by historians. 
that clearly talk about the council of the gods that make all the decisions on what's going to happen to humanity and when. And it's also the same thing we see this in other traditions. So, you know, the mountain of the Elohim, the mountain of the gods, no humans allowed there. There he went into a cave and spent the night. Then Yahweh spoke his word to Elijah. Hey, what are you doing here, Elijah? <laughs> he answered, Yahweh, Elohim, says Boeth, I have eagerly served you. I mean, this is a being. He's serving one of the controllers. Ah, the Israelites have abandoned your promises, torn down your altars, uh, executed your prophets. I'm the only one left, and they're trying to take my life. And then Yahweh said, go and stand in front of Yahweh on the mountain. As Yahweh was passing by, a fierce wind tore mountains and shattered rocks ahead of Yahweh. Ah, it's pretty easy to see that as a ship, is it not in technology? Yahweh was not in the wind, and after the wind came an earthquake, but Yahweh wasn't in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was a fire, but Yahweh wasn't in the fire. And after the fire, there was a quiet, whispering voice. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face and his coat, went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then the voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? And then he answered again, Yahweh, who is an Elohim, says Boeth. And this gets me thinking about, you know, the Gnostic view of the Demiurge. And, and this is, you know, what, what the Gnostics came to the conclusion was that this is, this is a, a dark, dark energy. Absolutely, this is a dark energy. And, you know, these, these beings play with humans like we are chess pieces and, and we're nothing but pawns. Mount Horeb is interesting because some think that uh, Mount Sinai and Mount Horeb are one and the same. Other thinks they're di other people, other scholars think they're different uh, names for the same place. Some think it's different locations. Um, but what was interesting is these are this is a place that's off limits to average humans, but the gods would come and go from there. This was one of their bases, and and yes, uh, you know, this isn't this is not dependent on Sitchin. In you'll get people that try to debunk it, saying, "Oh, well, Zechariah Sitchin was a mason, so they throw all this out." All this was translated before Sitchin. Sitchin just kind of put the uh, ancient astronaut touch on it in in more clarity. But these these books were translated well before Sitchin, even before he was born. So, you know, again, this is just part, and, and then you could go outside of that tradition, like the Greek tradition, it has nothing to do with Sitchin, but it, it tells the same story. This is the control system. This is what they do. You know, what we see and take for uh, natural, natural or an act of God is, is often the act of the control system. So I wanted to share that with you guys. We hope that we got some new nuggets over to you guys as you know, we're sharing with one of our family members that there really might come a time in the very, very near future where we're not able to uh, do these videos, not because they're taking us down, just because uh, the internet won't be up and we won't be able to communicate between each other. I do think that time is, is not far off, you know, maybe... Uh, a matter of, of six to 12 weeks or something, we might start seeing these disruptions that might last weeks or months. Uh, I don't think they'll last for years. I really, really, no, we don't see years. Um, but we do see uh, prolonged outages, confusion, and then when things are plugged back in, there will be a new system in place. Mm -hmm. I, I mean... Is it definitive for sure, for sure, for sure? No, but there is an awful lot of arrows pointing toward the time is very, very near. So we just need to do the best we can. I, I don't think I'm like I'm with Mike. I don't think it's going to be years and years. Um, the controllers don't want to go without controlling us for very long, but they do want to get a hold of our energy fields because we are expanding. I don't know how many people I've worked on that have had uh, expansion in their energy field and they're just getting better and better more and more psychic and they they really can't stop that but they can slow it down and i think that's what they want to do so take good care of yourself get prepared as best as you can and we're all in this ride together 
Yeah, absolutely. And on the other side of this, as Cindy was alluding to, and, and I know we're going a little bit longer here, but um, the humanity that's going to emerge is going to be almost unrecognizable. We're going down two different paths. The ones that take the technology and go into the system um, will come to the miserable realization that they're nothing but slaves and pawns, and they'll be locked into that system. The ones that, that will value their freedom above everything will move into a place where their abilities will be mind-blowing and you know humans will seem to be superhuman but this is just what we really are and that we know people that have amazing abilities it's not that uh cindy and i are the only ones that can communicate with our guides there's tons of people out there that communicate with guides and you know i still trust Cindy more than I trust myself in so many ways, but then I'm blessed to have her in my life. And then I realize, well, I was getting this from the guides. I was getting that from the guides. I just didn't trust myself enough, but I trust when she says it. So when we get that verification, you know, that, that little still voice, you can, you can really cultivate that. You have to have a daily practice. You have to decide, no, I'm not going to use any mind-altering substances that are going to lower my frequencies for literal demonic takeover because that's that's exactly what they do um you have to work to move your vibrations up as much as possible and to lift yourself up into being the best that you possibly can be and as always guys we really appreciate you being on this uh ride with us much love look forward to your comments source bless and namaste Namaste.